Meanwhile, the U.S. has accused Iran of supplying weapons to Syria at the United Nations Security Council in New York. However, Russia's ambassador to the U.N. has warned against turning up the heat on Iran. Moscow has called on the international community to be more objective when it comes to assessing developments around the Iranian nuclear program. Tehran is under intense pressure from the U.S. and the EU, who've targeted Iran's economy with heavy sanctions. For more on this, we can cross live to international consultant and author Adrian Salbucci in Washington. Uh, Mr. Salbucci, thank you very much for joining us. Let's jump right into this and just would you say that the U.S is using the Syrian conflict as an excuse to attack Iran and using the cover of the UN Security Council to do so. Well, no doubt that has been their uh, strategy all along, not only with, re with respect to Iran, but also with respect to Syria <clears throat> and even Iraq, if we go back to 2003 and, and before. Uh, undoubtedly, the problem that now the United States has is that it is at loggerheads with its main ally in the region, Israel, to see which is the best tactic to attack Iran. They both coincide on the strategy. They want to take down Iran no matter what, for different reasons perhaps, but they want to take it down uh, nevertheless. Less. However, as far as the way to do it, Israel would seem to favor a direct attack, a unilateral attack that they have been threatening to do for years now, whilst the United States seems to believe that the best way to reach Tehran is going through Damascus. So for various reasons, even military reasons, and the military in the United States have a very strong say in this, uh, are preferring first to deal with Syria in order to have, so to speak, a free chessboard to then, yes, go ahead and attack Iran. Now, you mentioned U.S.'s determination to attack Iran. How seriously can we take Washington's accusations when America backs the armed opposition who human rights campaigners are saying are guilty of gross abuses themselves? Well, I mentioned Iraq a few moments ago because I think that since Iraq, we just cannot take uh, seriously practically any American declaration regarding alleged weapons of mass destruction, as Saddam Hussein was supposed to have, or Iran's nuclear program, which they admit they do have, but the Americans and the Israelis and the British add on to it that it has a military objective, which it... I, would even, I, I put myself in the shoes of Iranian leadership, and if your country is threatened all the time, if the only country with weapons of mass destruction, nuclear bombs, in the region is Israel, and Israel threatens uh, Iran every other day that is going to attack it unilaterally, well, I wouldn't be surprised if Iran did think about militarizing their nuclear program, in spite of the fact that that might not have been their original objective. And on top of that, to the east and to the west, they have two countries, Afghanistan and Iraq, which are controlled by the United States and by Britain who do have nuclear weapons. So if you put yourself in the shoes of the Iranian leadership, I think that they would have to have many second thoughts about how to go about and how to drive their nuclear program. Let's turn the tables just for a second. If the claims made against Iran are actually true, what could be done? Tehran is already heavily sanctioned. Even the IMF is now warning about its global impact. Are Washington's hands tied? Well, first of all, I think we have to deal with the problem of double standards. Why is it that the United States, Britain, France, even China and Russia can be trusted with nuclear weapons? Israel can be trusted with nuclear weapons, whilst Israel's behavior in the region, even worldwide, has been deplorable over the past decades, and they have consistently had a very aggressive strategy, even of ethnic cleansing with the Palestinians. Why is it that we can trust all these countries that are going to behave nicely with nuclear weapons, and however, Iran has to be practically uh, erased off the map because they want to have a nuclear program. So I think that the intelligent thing to do would be to sit down, discuss all the grievances, discuss all the strategic and security problems of all the countries in the region, not just Israel and the United States, and try to reach an intelligent deal, which is what I believe Russia is trying to do. And thank God for the world that Russia and even China are doing this, because otherwise we would have seen Britain, America, and Israel overrun Iran thinking that nothing will happen as nothing happened with Libya where gross genocide was committed or in Iraq. All right. Thank you very much. Very interesting. No simple solutions here. Adrian Salbucci broadcasting live from Miami in the United States. Thanks for your views.